Hello everybody, this is Stephen Alston, this is Full Time Devils and this is your Manchester United. This is a show where you can call us up on Skype like you've been able to do since the dawn of Full Time Devils and tell us what's on your mind about Manchester United. Whether there's a transfer you like, a transfer you hate, or there's a, something going on with Mourinho's tactics that you think we need to talk about, this is the place to do that. Let's see what everyone had to say this week. First of all, thanks for giving us this opportunity to talk. Anytime. And uh, so I just wanted to say that I'm excited about next season. Even even though this last one finished like depending on just one game. What do you want to talk about, mate? So just regarding Mourinho's future, like recently he came out and said he wants to prove Mourinho wrong about um, he wants to prove that he's worth staying at the club. Yeah. And I'm excited for next season with Lindelof coming and also Morata. Feels like an FM signing because in every FM save I do, like Morata ends up at United. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm just wondering why um, it's taken him this long. Why, like, for three years, uh, the last three years, it's taken him. Nailed like, it. Nailed it, mate. You've nailed it. What? Why come out and say you're going to start training two week early? Where's the extra training been all this time? Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. I haven't really watched much of Lindelof, really, but I've um, I've watched Statman Dave talk about him, but. He's always wrong, isn't he? Absolutely, so. my friend. You can come again. Especially with the World Cup coming up. It's best for him to like look for another club if he wants first team football to try and get back into the World Cup squad. Absolutely agree. That's a beautiful tie you've got on as well. Did you say it yourself? No, I, I just came back from school. I had an exam for GCSE right now. You didn't tie the tie yourself? No, no, I did. I did. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, you, you're uh, a, you'd call yourself an expert tie tire, would you say? Uh, yeah, I, I like to think so. What do you want to talk about, mate? Uh, I'd like to talk about um, the our probable um, next signing, Morata, um, because I'm really happy uh, we're going to sign him instead of a huge name like Zlatan was. Well, it's like a comparative essay. They gave, they gave us two extracts and um, they told us to com compare both extracts. Yeah, I'm not asked about that. As what topic? What was the topic? I had one about a monkey in a cage in my GCSE exam. It was about um, how the people. Uh, it was about a winter story and how um, how those two boys trying to um, throw snowballs at a cat. At a cat. A weird story. Yeah. Have you ever thrown a snowball at a cat? No. Well, uh, I'll just wanting to know your take on which one you think's better. Uh, out of who? And who you'd prefer at Man United? I would have preferred Griezmann uh, uh, just as a signing, but in terms of a number yeah. nine, I think we definitely need a number nine, and I would have preferred Lukaku. Um, mm -hmm. being a mate with Pogba, being someone that's Premier League proven, um, knowing that he's that physical sort of hold-up man, I would have preferred him. But I don't think Murata's mm -hmm. too bad a, an option, although I, I definitely would have preferred Lukaku. What about you? Who do you think was the one you would have gone for? Uh, well, same, same with Lukaku. Don't get me wrong, I think £100 million is a lot. But I think that he's just he's a great player. And I think... I don't think Morata's as good. And I look at his stats from Real Madrid, and as long as he has got goals off, like coming off the bench, but at Juventus, he didn't get them type of goals. Like His record wasn't great. Are you top bunk or bottom bunk? I'm bottom bunk. <laughs> is that good or bad? Is that I don't know the hierarchy of bunk beds. Uh, I guess it's all right. I mean, I can get out of bed whenever I want without waking anybody up. So, What more do you want in life? I really think that it's in uh, Jose's mind to, to, develop, to develop Rashford as a striker and not, not as a winger. And this is why I believe in a system with only one forward. Um, I mean, Morata will be happy to play maybe, maybe 35 games a season and uh, Rashford the other 25. I mean, if it was, I mean, like we saw with Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Rashford didn't play many games up front. And this is why... I'm kind of happy with Moretta. I'm doing all right. It's just um, five past seven in Jamaica, so on my way to work here. But I'm all right. How are you? I'm all right. Is it a long commute that you've got? No, it's just a 10, 15 minute drive, really. So it's all right. Does it go past any beaches? <laughs> no, I'm like in the, the southeast coast of Jamaica, so it's not that far. But the beach is not far either, though. It's just a half an hour drive to the beach. So happy days, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's not as good as the M60, but I guess it's all right, I suppose. 
Um, so recently I was looking on the news and I heard that we were linked to uh, Fabinho. And um, um, Fabinho seemed he was in the team of the season for um, uh, AS Monaco and he was linking partners with Bakayoko. And I was wondering, um, he looks really promising and he could work alongside Pogba really well, in my opinion. Uh, so I was I just agree. wondering, what were your thoughts I, on? I agree entirely, yeah. I think I can't work out whether he's going to come and be a number six that plays alongside Pogba in a midfield two, or if he'd be part of a three with Ander Herrera, because I think, especially later on in the season, Jose really started to trust Herrera. Uh, I mean, anything really. I mean, you think about this Lindelof signing, it's, it hasn't really made me quite happy. I'm a bit concerned about what's at the club club at the moment though what's going to happen to the likes of a twin Zabi, you know because i really was hoping that he would get some more games next season about cbj as well i mean the young english talents at store i mean either jones or smalling is going to go so for me i'm very concerned about that british core you could say for next season what do you think about uh, us like depending on just two strikers if it ends up this way like rashford and morata the only two being there, there because, like, Martial is a winger now under Mourinho. I think he's still a forward. Uh, I'm not sure mm -hmm. we really play so often with out-and-out -out strikers. I mean, even Ibra would find himself in the number six position at times, um, mm -hmm. although that was kind of frustrating. I, I think you would utilise all three of them as forwards and... The thing I can't wrap my head around is Mkhitaryan and Mata, where they fit into this and where a potential Griezmann signing would have fit into this. Because I don't think Morata mm -hmm. is instead of Griezmann. I think it was a number nine, no, yeah. be that Belotti, Lukaku or Morata and Griezmann, Definitely. which made me think that then you would probably use Griezmann and Mkhitaryan and Mata as your three off the right-hand side, possibly. And then you've got mm -hmm. on the left-hand side, you've got Perisic, Marshall, Rashford. You've got all of these sort of players uh, and then you can you know, rotate in and around that. Is there any games coming up in Caribbean that we should know of? <laughs> well, there are a few. The Caribbean Cup is coming up in Martinique next week. I'm um, going to see a few former Premier League players involved, like West Ham player Julian Forbaugh. He's going to be playing for Martinique. And, uh, you know, Patrick Clivert, who was born to a mother from Curacao, he's going to be in charge of the Curacao national team, well, behind the scenes in a technical sort of room role you could say and uh, Florent Malouda former Chelsea player he's going to be playing for French Guyana and just a little tidbit for our full-time Devils fans as well there's actually been a Jamaican that has been part of Manchester United squad that was David Johnson back in the 1996-1997 season didn't play many games but he was part of the squad so that was good for our part to have a Jamaican being at Man United during Charles's reign. Is the Caribbean Cup like the Euros or is it a smaller scale competition? It's a smaller scale competition. It's a, you could say, a qualifier towards the Gold Cup, which is like the Euros in a way, where that the winner of that competition goes to the Confederations Cup. But it's still about bragging rights. Jamaica has six Caribbean Cup titles. Trinidad and Tobago, which of course pr produced the Dwight York, has eight titles. So we're catching up on them. But to be fair, Trinidad is like, you could say, the Liverpool because they're running down the glory days. They haven't won that competition since 2001, while we. Jamaica are the defending champions so next week in Martinique we're going to be hoping that we can get title number seven and it's really a, a big one for us because the the president of the Jamaican FA passed away last week and he's really been the father of football in Jamaica so the players are really looking forward to give him a real good you know send off you could say. Uh, apparently his no, there must be rumours that his wife apparently has dropped a little hint that um, she would like him to go to Man United I think come on mate don't be looking at Instagram likes and stuff like that you don't know who's controlling those accounts <laughs> that's true however um, Mourinho does like to make you know um, lots of uh, like he's known to make you know very uh, players that like quite strong and have that really like strong mindset and mentality and he's known to sign quite a lot of Brazilian players. And who in your unbiased opinion is the favourites for this tournament or as unbiased as you can be? Unbiased as I can be I would say based on current form it would have to be Curacao reason being that the players that they've been using mostly are from the Eredivisie and one or two from England for example Akuku Martini that was at Southampton last season while Jamaica has been using a majority of players in the likes of MLS and also locally in the Premier League in Jamaica. 
Um, of course, there's some Premier League players involved. You think of Watford, they have Adrian Mariapa as well, West Morgan at Leicester City. So there are some English players around in the Premier League, but I'm not sure if that will be enough. But I think based on the, the physicality that Jamaica has, because our average player is 5 feet 11 inches tall. So we have that on our side if we can use, if we want to go direct. Um, I think, you know, Morata coming in, obviously, uh, you know, he's a young player. He's worked with Jose Mourinho before. I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Mourinho gave him his debut at Madrid uh, back in 2010. But uh, I just, I think, you know, he's a young player. He seems quite mobile. And uh, hopefully, you know, him coming in, you know, hopefully the big fee won't, like, upset him or whatever. But, uh, you know... Lots of talk of, you know, Pogba not living up to his fee, blah, blah, blah. I, I think Pogba is brilliant anyway. I agree. Um, He's been fantastic. I think people constantly bring up the fee because it's the only thing they can bring up because the guy's been... Right, bring up I the mean, fee, or they say he hasn't bossed uh, a game against one of the, the top six. Right. Well, United underperformed in those games as a team. Can't be relied upon on his own. Tell us what your Instagram account is. We'll put it on screen. Uh, it's Man United TV. I recently just hit... 50,000 followers, so that's Oof. that's awesome. Smash it, so. All right, awesome. Well, we better be seeing a screenshot of this on there. What are you planning for breakfast? I'm going to the post office now, so I might, might grab something on, it, on the way. Oh, are you gonna, are you gonna be like a, have like a bit of a cheat one? Yeah, bit of a uh, sausage and bacon oh. roll. Oh. Breakfast of champions. Uh, what do you reckon about Murata? Do, do you rate him? Do you like him? Do you think he's happening? Uh, to be fair, I like him more than Lukaku. Uh, better fit, because He's Champions League proven, to be fair. I know he's not Premier League proven, but... Yeah, I mean, we're all just guessing how Mourinho's going to line up next season because if Fabinho comes in, that would be really good. But I would really like to see Blind yeah. in centre mid because that's where he came here for first. Do you think Josh Harrop is going to Preston? I saw the report today, Please. actually. Um, <laughs> yes. I think he probably will move, and I think it'll probably be the best for him in his career to move and get games and prove mm -hmm. how good he is at that level, because he's, he's certainly good enough, and I think opportunities at United will be limited next season. What do you reckon? Well, I think so too. Even though like people thought of him, he's a youngster, hot prospect and stuff, he's the same age as Martial, and we're like so critical of Martial when he's not playing that good, but like, oh, he's a youngster, he's a hot prospect. So he should probably go out there and prove himself. I agree. Nice one, Marco. Thank you, mate. See you in a bit. I think we are, who I've always said we need to sign is um, Akadi from Inter Milan. I think he's fast. What do you think? He is. And I think speed is what we've lacked in and around that final third, really. Do you think he can be the guy that replaces Ibra for us, though? Because I think that's the job that he's going to be doing, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I think he's quite... Like a, I've watched videos of him. I've seen him in the Champions League. and He, he gets a lot, a lot of headed goals. Like... So, but he's not obviously as big as Latan, but he can do that type of thing. But he has also got a bit of pace about him, and he can take it past someone. So he's he's quite a good all-rounded player. But I don't know how we're going to play next season. I don't know how Mourinho is going to set it up with Perisic or. So I, it, it it it's scary. It's kind of nervous for the minute. Hello, mate. How you doing? Oh yeah. Hey, hey, Harrison. How you doing? I'm not I so finally fine, made a call. Uh, I think we need like a defensive. Midfielder for Carrick because he's gonna like he's he can't play every match and a new striker as well. Uh yeah, well basically what everyone's wanting to talk about um, transfers. Really? <laughs> yeah, no shit. Hey. All right. Okay. Go on then. Uh, okay. So, um, how many transfers do you think Mourinho is gonna make this summer? Forty-four. Like, um, Forty-four. Yeah, uh, I'm only well, going off what the I papers think are saying. Just, uh, I just want to, one thing I just want to say about um, Lindelof mm -hmm. is just, just, it might come back to haunt me next this time next year, but when we got Eric Bailly, everyone will say, no, no one even heard of him, and everyone's questioning, oh, is this the right sign, and is this, is he going to be a, a top centre-back, but the thing is, I think that Mourinho sees something in Lindelof, which maybe he might, obviously, because I know your views on it, you're like, he, you what you think that he's not really good at defending as a defender, but he's good at bringing the ball out, like John Stones. There's more to it than that. I think positional wise, he's he's not the greatest. Yeah. I think he has been found out, and he does come out of the line a little bit one on one and gets turned and gets players in behind him. Now that could be tactics of the team that he's playing for. That could be you know 
it could be anything. It could be a number of things. I don't think you can use the Eric Bailly was amazing, so this guy will be amazing defence because yeah. Mourinho has also signed Del Orno. He's also signed Ben Haim. He's also signed Boularouz. So he does have dud defenders in his um, in his transfer history. I think, well, we've got Lindelof now, which I think is not too bad, actually. I think him and Bailly are going to do really, really well next season. I've got um, my reservations, course, but I think he's an upgrade on what we've got. So, you know. Because a lot, I don't know. Because a lot of people are saying it's it's like a Vidic and Ferdinand. It's like a Vidic and Ferdinand partnership. Yeah, how about relax? The thing, I know, I know, I, I know. I was saying that because I've got mates that say that as well. But the thing is, I don't know. It's just, I think he might, it might, it might, it might, it might take time to settle in. But I think he could, he could potentially become a good player. Yeah. I'm just calling to talk about um, the apparent negativity of signing Morata over Lukaku in United fan circles. Because for me, it's a footballing no-brainer to sign Morata over Lukaku. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Go on, he's, Def- he's cost, explain your he position. Cost, uh, he costs less money. And for my biggest one against Lukaku is he, uh, is he is a scorer of meaningless goals. He scored 27 goals in the Premier League. But if you take his goals out of Everton's season, he still finished seventh. So, in theory, he's not added anything to Everton's season because he scores the second in a 3 0. I wonder win. how many of those you could say about like Ronaldo, though, because Ronaldo, Real Madrid, they score a lot of goals as a you know, matter of course. Would the second and third goals for a Real Madrid team? In fact, Morata, how many of his goals actually mattered? He only plays in the smaller games against like Alaves and teams like that where Real Madrid are absolutely battering them. So, have you done a comparison? to defend your position that Lukaku only scores meaningless goals against what Morata's got against uh, teams in La Liga. I have to admit, you've probably done me there because the, <laughs> the Premier League's much more competitive uh, because you, can't pl- you have to play your full team more often to get results in the Premier League compared to Spain because only four games a season matter, Barcelona home and away and Atletico home and away. But... He scored more, He scored 15 goals in 14 games. In... I saw that on Squawker this morning. 15 goals in 14 yeah. games. He's come off the bench 12 times as well. Yeah. You can't just say he's I... only played 14 games when actually he's played 26 games. You know, a lot of them are off I... the bench. But either way, I just think I just think that economically it makes much more sense to buy Morata for me. And also his record for Spain internationally scoring more than more than a goal a game. So, in it, it makes complete sense to me to sign Morata over Lukaku. I just prefer him as a footballer. His hold-up play, his all-round game for me is better than Lukaku. And I, I am very happy with, with us signing him over Lukaku. I think Victor and Eric as a centre-half partnership sounds like a 1950s pub darts team. That's what I think. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, but I think well, we're going to get Morata, Morata any day now, so um, that's two signings. Uh, and I think, well, I'd prefer someone like Nine Golan for the centre mid spot. Uh, um, and then possibly, or well, even Perisic is probably going to be another signing that Mourinho is going to make. So if you think it's going to be four, so it's Lindelof as the defensive one, Morata as the attacking one, Perisic as that left winger, and Fabino as that defensive midfield. That's strengthened in a lot of areas, hasn't it? But do you do you see us signing anyone like a, a real star quality, like a Woodward signing? Do you know what I mean by that? Like, do you think we still need that, or do you think just those, you know, quite underwhelming, ordinary, you know, sort of above average, but not really getting anyone off the feet sort of signings? Is that going to be enough for us next season? Well, I think um, the ones that don't get you on your feet are the signings that are going to be. Uh... Well, yet again, it's pressured. Like not pe- not too many people know about them, so they're gonna just come. A bit like Henrik Mkhitaryan, I think he came um, for, from the start. I actually expected him to do really well. He wasn't playing at the start, but yeah, he came. Not much pressure on him, and then he just started playing like magnificently. Yeah, but basically, I wanted to talk about uh, our left back position. You think uh, Darmian and uh, Shaw are still in Mourinho's plans? Because I think that that side you know, is not as solid as we have it as Valencia on the right back, you know? What do you think goes on there? Uh, I agree. I think Valencia's, like, made himself almost untouchable at right back. 
And at left back, there's a lot of questions. Questions whether Luke Shaw can regain his fitness. If Luke Shaw can regain his fitness, then we've got another equally as solid side as we've got on the right hand side. Mm, I still want that um, that big sign in me. I think just to. to but, uh, I think Woodward. I think, does only two, I think the only two big signings that are realistic are um, well, Hammers and well, a bit um, out the blue, they're Bale. But mm. I don't see, see us getting Bale. I think Hammers is the uh, Woodward signing that that most likely happen. I've been seeing a couple rumors about um, Danny Rose, Tottenham. I don't know, like he might be a solid signing, but we need somebody to just cement that position, just like Valencia, where he can run up and down. He can do both things, cross and uh, defend in the back. You know, yeah. a lot of help is needed yeah. in the back. And you know, if uh, we're um, hopefully De Gea stays. If De Gea stays, I believe. Um, Back four won't be as like uh, you know in, in important to just like uh, go ahead and cement because we got that solid keeper in the back, you know. But we need someone to close the gaps on the wing. Thank you to everybody that we spoke to this week. If you want to get involved, then keep an eye out on Monday on social media for when to call in. If you want to add us right now, it's FT Devils on Skype. But remember, keep an eye out on Monday for the time to call in, and maybe we'll see you on this video next week. Later's. <laughs>